What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Morning Rundown here. Um, going to run through a couple things today. Uh, there's no minor league games today outside the complex leagues, so there won't be too much going on tomorrow, but we'll still have another episode for you. Uh, I think getting into the biggest news of the day is that Quinn Priester is making his major league debut, and we got word later in the evening yesterday that he's not going to be alone. Um, Andy Rodriguez and Leover Piguero are going to be joining him in Pittsburgh. Piguero, of course, made his major league debut last year. Um, played in one game, got his first hit, all that stuff. So this will be his 2023 debut, but big day for the Pirates. Going to get one of their top pitching prospects, get their first round pick from 2019 up, get Andy Rodriguez up. Arguably still their best prospect overall, depending how on how you look at things. Um, staying in the minors longer than a lot of people really wanted him to. He had had a tough stretch when it came to hitting it at, at some points, but um, working on the catching and, and stuff like that, you know, sometimes that kind of interferes with the hitting. So... Getting him up there, that that probably means the end of Jason DeLay here. Um, Austin Hedges probably hangs around to kind of be the veteran presence to kind of teach them. Um, but big big day, getting all this all in one thing. Um, I wrote a little bit about it on my Substack on there. I have a Substack now. If you guys wanted to take a look, subscribe at Bucks on Deck. Um, Priester is going to be fun to watch. He's I've talked about him on here, too, a little bit. Uh, a lot of his success is going to come from how well the the fastball sinker plays on a on a game to game basis. Uh, if hitters are beating it into ground a lot we're he's going to, we're going to see him be successful. And then he can pair in the slider and the curveball, both been able to get a lot of swing and miss with it. So we'll see how that goes against the Cleveland Guardians tonight. Um as far as Andy, Andy hasn't hit for the same power that that we've probably would have liked to seen. He hasn't really um, hit twenty five home runs last year. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think we should have ever expected him to kind of run that back. I think he's always been a guy who more on the average power side of things. I think t- if we get ten to fifteen home runs from him as as a catcher. While you know, actually sticking behind the plate, and the hit tool is still plus, so I think he could hit for a good average. He uh, didn't strike out much down there, walked quite a bit in in Indianapolis. Probably will be a little bit of an adjustment period as he learns to both catch and hit in the majors. So maybe he struggles a bit going in, but I think that's also why they are adamant about keeping Austin Hedges around. So. Really excited to see Andy um, in the majors. I remember back in his first year in the system back in 2021 when he was with Bradenton. I watched a lot of Bradenton games that year, and he was always a guy that just kind of stuck out stuck out from the crowd. Um, led the F- Florida State League. At, they called him the Low A Southeast Division or whatever like that. Coming back out of COVID. Um, was one of the leaders in almost every single offensive category. And obviously we saw him kind of do the same thing last year, just kind of take off Had one of the best overall seasons out of any minor league player. <clears throat> and for, for Piguero, Piguero has always been a guy that I kind of refused to go away from to kind of cool off on to kind of, I've always been really high on the, on the raw pure skill set. Um, had a little bit of a rough second half of the season last year, ended up staying in Altoona. And this year he's, it's, it's almost been night and day after a little bit of a rough start. He's hitting for more power, uh, making more consistent contact, not swinging and missing as much. He's walking more. Um, The walks were really, really bad, really low last year. So it's good to see him walking a little bit more. The strikeouts have come down. Like I said, he's hitting for more power. So, and the defense, the defense it has has improved a bit. It's still kind of like I, I don't think defense is ever going to be his calling card. 
but he great speed. The the hit tools improved. The power has shown a little bit more. If if he gets on base, he's probably going to try to steal second, um, which is which is good. I I thought the Pirates. If you, if you go back to think about beginning of the season when they were having a lot of success, they were very active on the base bats. So if they could get somebody back in the lineup who can offer that kind of skill set, I think would go a long way. So really excited to see the three get up there and 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 play. Um, I have a little bit of a further breakdown of, of Quinn Priester and his pitch skill set and all that stuff. That, that'll come out later in the day, probably be out by time this gets up slash you get to it. So give that a, give that a look as well. Um, And so, yeah, but really excited at the time when you think about the potential lineup that they have in there, what is the, they have potential to have four former draft picks with another couple guys who were either traded or, or signed or, brought into the organization before they made their major league debut and the pirates kind of put the final touches and all that. So so very exciting time. I don't know if this is going to necessarily translate to more wins, which is, I know what everyone wants, but you get all the young guys up, you get this, this is the next wave of your core. You kind of put them together, let them learn together, let them lose together. And eventually the goal is to, they'll learn to lose enough that they eventually learn to win and there, there'll be some winning that goes on. But the only other thing I wanted to talk about today was, was one of the bigger highlights of the weekend, and that was Tamar Johnson, who I guess I guess you can say I saw on Twitter a lot that uh, he, t- he took it personal about his Baseball America um, ranking on how he dropped near, almost fell out of the top 100. He six hits over the weekend, over the three game weekend series. Three of them were home runs. One of them was a double. Um, four walks. the The home run he hit on Sunday was a massive, uh, massive shot. Went 471 feet. Uh, it was clocked at 111 miles per hour. Exit velocity did scare us a bit because he did leave the game. Um, he swung at a pitch and immediately reached for like his calf and could barely move. And, you know, there's a lot of concern at first. It look, uh, turns out it looked like it was just a cramp that he had. Um, so that that's good that he, he already missed a good chunk of the beginning of the season and spring training kind of played into his slow start that he had. So, but tomorrow's starting to come around. Um, I, I was kind of looking at his numbers, looking around. He, he's, pulling the ball a lot more than he had that he was last year. And I think that could be part of the issue, you know, with it, you know, maybe he's trying to pull the ball a little bit too hard and, and getting away from his more of a natural swing and let just putting the ball play and let his hit tool kind of do the work for him. Uh, he took a O2 pitch on the outer half to left center for a double on Sunday. So that kind of shows if he just kind of sticks to that kind of approach I, I I think Tamar should be fine. Like I, I, there was some swing and miss issues early in the season, and that could have been a timing thing. That could have been him trying to pull the ball too much. That could have been him trying to do too much in general. Whatever it is, like you, you sit down and and watch him long enough, you can see the the potential and the talent there. He's just eighteen just turned 19 years old uh, there, there's going to be some struggles going on and it was I've I've always felt it was a little unfair to to mention Wade Boggs and Vlad Guerrero as a potential swing comps and and whatnot before the kid even stepped out into the field so tomorrow will be fine um maybe by the end of the season we'll, he maybe he'll get a little bit of a taste of Greensboro and before starting there next year maybe next year you really start letting him dictate how quickly he he moves up the ladder but that's going to be it for the for today's rundown um as always uh, like rate subscribe to to the youtube channel for, so you can get your daily uh updates um, like i said previously i have a sub stack now bucks on deck go ahead and subscribe to that as well to get daily updates and then i'm gonna be doing some premium feature articles 
as well as like rankings and and my usual breakdowns that I've always done. So go give that a look as well. I'll post a link to it in in the description below. And um, everyone have a good day.